Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, attending this session. Uh, I'm going to use about uh, 15 minutes to talk about out of band management, uh, how out of band management is uh, aging, and how we think it needs to evolve to uh, follow what's happening in the market. Uh, the definition of out of band management uh, this definition has been valid for the last 20 years. I remember drafting. Uh, the, the definition uh, around 2000, and it says that an out-of-band management system provides a secure alternate path so that a network engineer can reach the console port of any network device, even when the production network is disrupted. So it is about a network engineer at the central site being able to access devices at the edge of the infrastructure even if the networking is the network is not working, right? So it's an alternate path that guarantees you can always reach the devices so that you don't need to send someone there. Uh, Open Gear over the last uh, several years has become the market leader, the technology leader in this space. 75% uh, of the Fortune 100 companies rely on Open Gear for network management. And we offer a complete system, which includes uh, Lighthouse software. Lighthouse software is the place you go as a central point of access, uh, monitoring and control for your out of band uh, infrastructure. And then to provide the presence and proximity at the remote sites, uh, OpenGear offers a, a selection of uh, uh, management appliances that range from a few parts, if you're managing an IT closet, to very large uh, rack mountable systems that enable you to manage a hyperscale data center. So we cover the entire range from small to large across all verticals, providing a complete out of band management system. And, uh, but the, the, the market is changing and our products and the concept of out of band needs to evolve. So let's uh, spend a few minutes talking about what's happening in the market. So uh, if in the last uh, 10 years, we have seen complexity moving from the edge of the network to the core or to the cloud, uh, everyone is anticipating that in the next 10 years, the IT complex is going to move back to the edge of the network. Uh, this is because we are uh, consuming a lot of video content. We are uh, starting to use a new generation of applications that uh, are going to generate a lot of data very close to the end user. It's going to require very quick response time, very low latency. And uh, so everyone thinks that in the next 10 years, there is more IT complexity being deployed at the edge of the network. So if, for example, you are uh, doing uh, AR, VR, for example, uh, you generate a lot of video data, uh, that data has to be acted on very quickly. It just doesn't make sense to transport all this data back to a cloud data center, process it there and send the results back, right? You need to be able to respond to that data very close to the last mile connection. And that's why enterprises and service providers are deploying more and more uh, data centers and uh, uh, IT infrastructure very close to the end user. The second aspect uh, that is changing is the, the culture and the operation of IT organizations. Uh, this is reality today over the last several years. Uh, DevOps has taken uh, a route in the, the IT infrastructure where uh, organizations are uh, integrating right, and collapsing uh, the design and the operation of the infrastructure and adopting technologies such as virtualization and automation. So that's also very important because when people use out of band today, they are connecting to the console port of uh, a networking device and they are typing commands at the CLI as they automate, as they virtualize, they're going to do, they're, they're going to want to do different things over the out of band uh, network. And, and a question that I'm asking very, uh, asked very often is, why is it that networking is evolving so slowly, right? DevOps is already implemented in pretty much every other IT silo and virtualization is implemented in pretty much every IT silo. Why is it that networking is so slow? Uh, the reason why networking is slower than the other IT silos is that networking is special. Uh, if I'm managing an application, let's say I'm managing an email server, right? And 
my, my server hardware fails because everything is virtualized, because everything is distributed. When, when a piece of hardware fails, I can just move the workload to a different server and the end user doesn't even feel there was any disruption, right? So virtualization ha helps to increase the resilience of IT services and to some degree, uh, decrease the importance or the relevance of the hardware layer, the physical layer, because software workloads can be moved anywhere. Now, networking is special because in networking, the mission is always being able to connect point A to point B, meaning that there is a direct association between the person or the group of people consuming the service and their physical location. So in networking, no matter how much you virtualize, how much you automate, the awareness between the logical layers of management and the physical layer of the infrastructure is always gonna be there, right? So Open Gear is in that business of connecting the physical layer with the, the logical management layer of the infrastructure. And, that, and that's a very important concept that allows us to understand why you know, processes why technologies evolve faster in application management, for example, in server management, and they move slower in networking because networking is responsible uh, for maintaining connectivity for everyone else and any network in the physical uh, connection of management is very special. So we think uh, we need to evolve the definition of out of band so that out of band can continue to be relevant and can continue to deliver the same value as it has uh, offered in the last 20 years. So on the screen now is the definition we have been working on that we hope will work for the next 20 years in describing what out of band management has been for the last 20, right? So a network resilience platform establishes a management plane that extends the reach of management systems at a central location to access the edge infrastructure independent of the state of the production network. And if you read this definition, you can notice that the essence is the same, right? It is still about uh, being able to connect uh, the central site to the edge of the infrastructure, even if the production network is down, even if the internet's not available, even if there is a circuit failure somewhere. So the, the essence is the same, but it is less about connecting people to ports like in traditional out of band management. And it's more about extending the reach of other management system of automation systems. So, so that those systems can continue to reach the edge of the network, even when the production network is down. And uh, the separation of the management plane is another concept that's very important. Uh, we need to be very aware of the difference between data plane and management plane so that we can build uh, infrastructure that's very resilient. So I'm gonna use a, a diagram to explain that in the next slide. Before that, uh, I just wanna show that Open Gear uh, just a few weeks ago introduced a new family of uh, management appliances. They look the same, meaning they are rack mountable units that you can deploy at the remote side to provide uh, presence and proximity services. But they have some, some special features, some new features, right? So they, first they have embedded physical security. Uh, they have a trusted platform module built into the hardware so that they can pro provide secure boot and secure configuration, which means that, you know, if you're shipping uh, one of our devices to a colocation facility, you don't have to worry about the chain of custody of that piece of equipment, right? You don't have to worry about someone having physical access to the device and being able to retrieve information uh, from the configuration um, uh, information. So they cannot get your VPN keys, your passwords, or your, the topology of your network. All that information is encrypted. The keys to the encryption is stored in secure memory. And when you boot the system, you know that the firmware that's running there is signed and if someone tampered with the, the firmware or tried to introduce some malicious code, the system will detect it and not boot. The, the second important feature is that uh, it runs on an x86 uh, processor, which is different from previous uh, embedded management appliances, and it supports Docker containers so that we can deploy uh, management applications to the appliances 
uh, without having to recompile for a different processor, right? So uh, these appliances, they, they support containers and you can deploy any off the shelf management application to them if you want to. And uh, being new hardware, it leveraged the, la the latest in hardware technology, has a fast CPU, has a lot of storage space, has a lot of memory, so that we can support not only traditional out of band, but the, the automation uh, use cases as well. So uh, going to the diagram, uh, if you're managing a very large, very complex infrastructure, you might have uh, a core uh, infrastructure, a core data center, or maybe your core infrastructure is in the cloud. You have a collection of edge uh, or remote sites, and you might have storage networking compute nodes, uh, both at the core and at the edge location. Uh, one thing that uh, has happened and uh, we have been, the industry has been implementing the past few years is really the, uh, the removal of the intelligence from the devices themselves so that the control plane, right, the controllers, they become generic software that can be run in any commodity hardware. That way the, the hardware appliances become uh, more standard, uh, they become less intelligent, they become more commodity and everyone benefits from that, right? So that separation between the control and the data plane has been happening for several years now. It is, it is the, the application of virtualization technologies to separate the intelligence from the hardware. If you have an infrastructure like that, there are people who are responsible for maintaining it. And the network engineers, they are typically close to a central site. And if they need to manage the remote infrastructure, if they don't have out of band, they just rely on the data network to, re, uh, to reach the edge locations and get access to their uh, networking devices. We know the problem that that triggers. Uh, if you rely on the network to manage the network, every time there is a disruption, you hit a, dead, a deadlock and you can no longer see the remote site. So the only solution is for you to send uh, uh, someone there to row a truck and, and send someone to the remote location to fix the problem, right? So the solution for that is out of band management. Open Gear is the leader in the market, but there are several other vendors offering solutions there. So typically an out of band management system has a resilience platform, which is a software platform at the central site. Uh, it uh, can, has the ability to create connectivity, not only using uh, alternate IP connections, but also using uh, technology like uh, cellular LTE. And then you deploy uh, management appliances at the remote sites to provide that presence and proximity service. So over the last uh, several years, uh, we have convinced the industry, the IT organizations that if you're a network engineer, you're trying to reach a remote site for management purpose, uh, you should not even bother go through the, the production network. Right? You always come to Lighthouse software and say, I need to go there. And Light, Lighthouse has all the intelligence to figure out what circuits are available. If there are no circuits available, we establish a connection using LTE and we'll take you there, right? No questions asked. So that, that's really the, the value proposition of out of band management systems is if I need to reach my device is at the, the edge, just take me there. And I don't wanna know if the internet is available. I don't wanna know if my MPLS circuit is on. I don't wanna know if my device is working, just take me there and, and I can talk directly to the device, right? So, uh, but as we, we, we discussed uh, earlier, it's not only about getting people to parts, this needs to evolve. So one of the things uh, we, are, we are doing, and we talked about this uh, in the last Tech Field Day last year, at Cisco Live last year, uh, Open Gear is developing also management applications and we call them NetOps modules that allows you to automate some of the most common uh, use cases when you're using out of band management. And, uh, but Open Gear is not gonna solve all the network management problems. Uh, our customers, the IT organizations are deploying other technologies such as uh, orchestration tools like Ansible. They are deploying data analysis tools like Splunk. They are deploying changing configuration management tools 
like uh, Cisco DNA Center and all those new automation or, or uh, system management tools, they, in order to manage uh, devices at the remote site, they need to deploy management agents, right? So they might be telemetry agents, monitoring agents, data collectors that are typically deployed as some type of virtual appliance and run on the, the remote uh, infrastructure. And those management systems, when they talk to their agents, like uh, humans before, in the absence of any other network, they rely on the production network to talk to those agents. And we already know from the history that uh, every time you, you rely on the network to manage the network, you're gonna get to a deadlock every time there is a disruption, right? So we, uh, the, the, the era of automation of network management is still young and we still haven't fully become aware of that problem. But if you're using any of those tools or technologies to manage your network infrastructure today, and they are relying on the data network to talk to the, the, the agents at the remote site, at some point you're gonna hit the same deadlock, right? You're gonna have a, a, a site go offline because of some networking problem. And then once you go offline, the management systems are no longer able to manage the remote site, which is exactly the moment where you need to manage them, right? So we need to find a better solution for that and we believe the, the, the out of band management systems we already built that people have already deployed and they have already got used to, uh, they can solve that problem. So we are doing uh, with the announcement uh, a few weeks ago of the new NetOps console servers, OpenGear is evolving that solution. And we are implementing something in Lighthouse that we call the automation gateway, which provides a standard based uh, interface for the management systems so they can, without any change uh, and in the most transparent way possible, be able to reach the remote site over the out of band channel rather than going through the data network. The, the new appliances, because they run uh, x86 and they support Docker containers, they have the ability to host those uh, management agents. So we can remove those agents from some borrowed server from the application groups and we can now run those, all those management applications in a platform that's owned and managed by, by the network management group. So you are no longer, no longer having to beg someone for a space in their servers to deploy management applications. You can deploy management applications in your management appliances, the new console servers that provide both the, the smart out of band features as well as the NetOps features. And that way, uh, once you implement uh, uh, the new uh, management plane, uh, you can really separate the management plane from the data and control plane. And uh, we learned right in the 70s when well, we are modernizing the, the phone system, uh, we learned that separation of the management plane was very important to ensure availability and resilience of the network. Uh, the telco network was very distributed and had a separate set of protocols a separate set of infrastructure to carry the management traffic. And then as we start concentrating things into the data center, we kind of forgot about that concept of separation of the management plane. And as in the next few years, we go back to the edge and we, we make the IT infrastructure very distributed again, uh, we are gonna have to relearn the concept of separation of management plane. So, so this is the, the vision uh, OpenGear has for the out of band management system. Uh, I don't think this is gonna change overnight. It is a, a journey that's gonna take several years to implement uh, in, the, in the Brio infrastructure. Uh, but we think we have uh, both the concept and the, the technologies to evolve uh, the concept of out of band and make sure that your, your management infrastructure is separate and independent from the production uh, infrastructure so that uh, you can guarantee resilient access even when there is a disruption in the infrastructure.